Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a pretty interesting video for you guys, which is setting up a multi-monitor setup with an Android device or old Android phone. And if you see my previous video where I was actually cleaning up my studio slash basement, uh, I found a lot of phones. And if you're anything like me where we don't want to throw out tech and we still got phones from like 2005, here's what we could use it for. So let's get started. I'm not being sponsored by Space Desk at all. I just found this to be very interesting and a good use of old devices. But if you do want to help the channel out, you can always sign up for our VPN service from private internet access using the link below or check out my Patreon. So today we're going to be checking out Space Desk. This particular software has actually been out for quite some time. And I decided to choose this one because one, it's free. Two, it supports a lot of client side devices uh, Android, iPhone, another laptop. You can install the software on another laptop. But best is that if you have a browser that supports HTML5, this works as well. So you don't even need their application, you just need a software that supports HTML5. So if you got a Blackberry or something, I don't know, something old that still has a modern browser that could do HTML5, this could work as well. The only downside to this is only supports Windows on the server side. So you need a Windows computer for it to stream to other devices. And that's another reason why I am in this office space instead of filming in my new clean studio. That's because one, this is the only Windows computer I have. And two, the natural lighting doesn't look too bad. So let's get started with installing this on my Windows computer. So the first thing we're gonna do is navigate over to the website called spacedesk.net and download the server application. So here we have driver software and I'm on 64-bit Windows 10, so I'm just gonna grab that. Here we go. And you see, look, Space Desk Viewer Software for Secondary Machine, which is Windows, Google Play, Amazon, in case you can't download it from Google Play because your device don't support Google Play, App Store, which is the iPhone, and HTML5. And the only prerequisite for the HTML5 is that you have the latest version of web browser and it doesn't support Firefox. Now, similar products, if you want to take a look at this, these are all the other ones that... Now, I've tried um, Slash Top X Display before and... That worked out okay. I display was better, I believe. But we're gonna try something new. Now, the only da another downside to this is that it's only Wi-Fi, and that might impact speed depending on your Wi-Fi connection. So, but for a secondary screen, if you just need to display certain things, it's not bad. I hope I haven't tried it yet. This is my first time trying it. So next, I accept. Next, uh, okay, I'm gonna install this on my C drive add exception to my firewall yes remember that if you don't add exception to a firewall you're going to run into that problem where it's being blocked all right finish and i think that is it there isn't much just wanted to see how intuitive it is but it doesn't say much after that support system all right i guess it's time to install it on our uh, android devices now i'm going to be using my own cell phone i actually have more devices downstairs but um, this one actually supports screen recording, so it's so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm at the Play Store right now, and I'm gonna hop over and grab what do you call this thing? Space Desk Remote Display. Here you go. Same company. All right, it's installing. That's it. I know it was small. It was like 900 kilobytes or something like that. So that's good. That means there's no ads in it or something like that. I'm gonna hit open. Uh, your Android version can only connect to Windows driver, da, 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 which I did download. Do not show this again. Hit OK. Oh, look, it found my computer already. So once I hit connection, display is off. All right, that's really cool. So let me show you guys this. So now I have my screen up on top and then my display, my cell phone on the bottom. Um, it just hooked up right away and it just worked. I didn't have to do anything. And it's very, very legible. Like I could read. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. I could read everything that's on the screen. Look at that. I could read the text on here pretty easily. So let's try some stuff. First, can I set up the display because it's underneath my screen? Oh yeah, look at that. All right, so if you open your display, go to properties and hit display, you're gonna see the second monitor, number two. That's my cell phone. So I'm gonna hit apply and now I move the screen to the bottom. What that means is now if I move my mouse to the bottom, there you go. My mouse is down there. Let me show you how this would look. So if I was to move that, you see that? The screen is moving to the bottom. 
the refresh rate isn't too bad for being Wi-Fi. And I could see it's not 32-bit color. It's got some kind of gradient to it. Let me see if I can show you guys. Yeah, but it's definitely legible. Like I could read this easily. And in particular, I wanted to use a second display is because when I'm playing full screen games, I can actually read all my computer stats. So let's see how that would come out if I was to do that. Um, I got the MSI utility. Let's pop this open. And I wanted to monitor. Ah, oh, there you go, hardware monitor. So I wanted to pull up a hardware monitor like so. Can I resize this? I can't resize this. And move it down to the bottom. Um, yeah, I could actually see all my stats down here now. And I could read it pretty well too. And I don't need this to refresh too fast, especially when I'm playing games, I could just be able to see what I need to do. That's pretty cool. Okay, so if I added another device. So imagine I have more than one and I'm gonna give this a try. I do have another device that I am gonna install this on which is a tablet. So this is a much bigger screen. Let's see how this works. Oh, yep, look, it found it right away. This Android device that I'm showing you guys right now is limited to Android 5.0. So if that's something you guys are, you know, 5.0, I can't install any higher. So being that it's 5.0, it's a pretty old operating system and it's still able to install it. That's pretty cool. All right, now that I did that, oh look, the screen automatically had a number three on there. That's cool. That was quick. So if I want to move this down to the bottom left, because I'm right next to this phone, hit apply. Now I technically got another display right here. I'm holding it up with my hand right now, but let me give this a try. Um, identify because I couldn't tell which one, what screen is what. It's not dragging it down there. It kind of froze. Let me hit apply again. Maybe I'll refresh it, but no, it's kind of frozen on this screen. Have you see? And my CPU usage and stuff hasn't moved. So, okay. It's giving me a hard time with three displays. All right, so it popped up with an error saying that I failed to open additional displays. Let me jump back into this in a second. All right, so one reboot later, let's give this a try again. I'm gonna hit my screen. Display is off, display is back on. Yep, okay, now it's back and it's working again. Cool. What I wanted to try was that second, third monitor because if I have multiple of these devices, I, I wanna be able to kind of spread it out. So let's try this on my tablet again. Here we go. Oh, and it actually has that orientation. So if you're worried about orientation, uh, that works too. So let me kind of, oh, you know what? I need to set up the display. So the third display should be this one. Let's apply that. Okay, let's move this down here. And there you go. This should be here. That's what I, I was trying to hold it for. Yeah, that's not gonna hold up. So I'm gonna have to hold it up myself. In particular, this isn't as bright. This screen isn't as bright. That's normal because this is like a cheap tablet that I have. So let me see if I can brighten up the screen. There you go. I don't know if you guys could see that, but I brightened up the screen pretty much. I'm able to now move this between the two screens. You see that? It's looking pretty good. And now that I got the bigger display, um, again, it sends JPEGs over. You could tell that like it's not as clear as it should be. So I'm guessing trying to play any video games or trying to play any videos on this is not gonna be a thing. So let's uh, pull up my channel, pop this over to my vlog channel that I just uh, worked on. Okay, so something's going on with this display. It could be a Wi-Fi driver issue, but it doesn't like to refresh. My cell phone works pretty good, or maybe because I got Wi-Fi interference right now, but it is loading, you see that? Let me see if I could skip, get my mouse over there to skip the ad. 
Yeah, you can see it's like not as smooth. To play videos, it's not gonna be as smooth. It, it does work, it's not that smooth. So displaying text might work. Oh look, it's not too, too bad. It's got the skipping. Especially on a device like this, which is eight inches, you're actually able to read everything you want. Now let's uh, move this out of the way before I break the drivers again, and let's rotate this. And there you go, look, it, it rotated on its own. You see a bench, it's oriented this way. So, oh yeah, look at that. This is a vertical monitor now. I can just read my websites off a eight inch tablet off to the side. You know what this would work really great on? Uh, fire tablets, you know they were for like 30 bucks at one time? And you have one of those fire tablets and you, you don't know what to use it for? This would be a great option for it. Another option that I really wanted to try now that we have this up is actually using HTML5. So let me let me turn the screen off and turn that screen off and then pull up my laptop and then we'll see how that works as well. Now, what I what do I need to do here? Go to my cell phone, hit the back button, hit okay, boom, I close that display. Let me go grab my laptop. We'll test it on my laptop and see how well that works as a third display or second display. All right, so here I have my uh, laptop and it's running Linux, so I can't install the Windows application on this, but I could use the HTML5. So what I'm gonna try is pop up a Chrome. Now that I'm on spacedesk.net, I'm gonna scroll down to the HTML5 support and see if it could pop up my lap on my desktop. Let's go over down to downloads, scroll down a little bit and go to HTML5. Viewers loading up right now. That looks pretty promising, very promising right now. Oh, let's see. I know is 192, popped in the IP address. Now it's connecting and automatically turned into full screen. There we have it. That's impressive. Now, because I don't know, oh, let me minimize this. I don't know where the orientation of this screen is. So, oh, it automatically made number two on the bottom. and. Technically that works out unless you have it on to the left or the right. So let's move this let's move this down to the bottom. Ho oh, ho. Again, it's running like a JPEG type thing, but it, it reads very it reads pretty good. So if you got an old laptop that could still install Chrome, this works. That's pretty good. I mean, I'm able to get the laptop working, if you, especially if you got an old laptop that it's just sitting there and you could still install Chrome onto it. This is this is not a bad option. I mean, the latency is there, so it's not, you can't stream videos or anything, but if you're reading a website or you need, if you, are, if you only have one monitor and you're following a tutorial and you need that second monitor so you can read and do whatever you're trying to do, I don't know. This works very, very well. Um, again, there's latency issues, so it's gonna happen. You're on a Wi-Fi network. Maybe if you're on an Ethernet network, um, it should be a little bit better. Uh, two, it's a. It seems to be a JPEG compression, so you're not get that. You're not getting the highest of quality on this, but enough to display what you're trying to display. And again, if you have old cell phones and you clip them all, you know, on the bottom of your screen, now you got like five or six screens on the bottom that you can just toss information up there, like. CPU frequency or MSI afterburner if you're playing a game or something. And I don't think, um, let me let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Um, okay, so it's only about idle, like I'm, I'm, I have something on the screen. It's sending only about one megabit to two megabits per second, which isn't a huge thing. Megabits, not megabyte, megabits per second. So it's not, not huge, it's actually, pretty low considering what I'm trying to send over, but I don't have that much screen updates right now. It's just updating my CPU usage and the temperature of my CPU. But yeah, I think uh, this is pretty interesting and I, I thought I would share with you guys. Anyway, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.